Hi folks, welcome back. Thank you for watching. Please do hit subscribe if you haven't done so yet. It really does help when you do that. So today folks, I'm coming at you from a slightly jaunty camera angle with another viewer's request video. Now, last summer I made a video all about these things here, potentiometers, obviously in the guitar context. And that was a kind of 101 video of important basics you need to know and understand about these things when choosing the correct pot for a certain situation in your guitar. And I had a comment come in underneath that video yesterday from Loco War, brutal, who says, it would have been nice if you'd showed us how to measure the pot with the multimeter, which as they say, I didn't do in that video. I think I just assumed everyone would know how to do that, but that's what I'm here for to show you guys the basics. So today I'm going to measure this part with a multimeter. Now, when it comes to choosing a multimeter, you can get really big money ones. You don't really need to for a guitar context. It's more like high voltage, the big money ones are for. Any cheap multimeter will do. This was about a tenner on eBay. You can get them on Amazon or down your local electronic shop. And you need to be measuring resistance. Now resistance is measured in ohms and this here is the symbol for that. So we're gonna turn the multimeter to read in ohms to measure resistance. Now what we're gonna do with the pot is turn it so it is completely open. You can measure the pot either way around when you're measuring just the absolute value. I'll talk about that more in a second. I'm going to turn the pot so it's completely open and as far round as it will go, that's important. And then I'm going to take the black lead, the neutral, and put that on the middle lug, and then take the red lead and put it on the right hand lug. And that will tell us the value of the pot. So in this case, this is one of the uh, CTS bare knuckle kind of central lab replicas, slightly overvalued, and it's measuring in at 566.8 kilo ohms. So that is the value of the pot. And that will work for any guitar pot. Now, as I said, you can measure it either way around. And this is something I have to be very aware of as a left-handed guitarist. Because when you, the best way of thinking about a pot is the middle lug is the output. And the outside two lugs are what you're using the pot to blend between. It's a variable resistor and it kind of blends between what are soldered onto the outside two lugs. So if, for example, you have your guitar's pickup wired into one of the lugs and the other outside lug is grounded to the back of the pot. What that will be doing is blending between your pure, completely kind of untouched pickup signal and your entire signal dumped to ground, silence. So it'll be working as a volume pot. On one extreme you get full volume, on the other extreme you get zero. Now you can wire the two outside lugs either way around. But what will change, two things will change. One, the direction that the pot works in. So that might be full volume with the pickup wired to the left lug. That will be full volume with the pickup wired to the right. But as I spoke about in that original video, you will reverse the taper. So if you're using a linear taper pot, doesn't matter, you can wire it either way around. The only thing that will change is the direction you have to turn the pot to get full volume, for example. In guitars, it's much more common to find audio or log taper pots. So for me, in left-handed guitars, fenders are really bad for this. What will happen is I will get by a guitar with standard right-handed pots in that are then wired in reverse so they work the correct way around in the guitar relative to the body, but that will reverse the audio taper. So on a tone pot, for example, nothing happens until you get right to the bottom and it's like an on-off switch because it's a log taper that doesn't really do anything and then it shoots right up at the end. So you can measure it either way around. You just need to make sure to turn your pot to the correct extreme. So if you try to measure the pot and it's reading zero, turn it round, you should get the value of the pot. So there we are, folks. It's very, very simple. You just need a cheap multimeter and a pot, obviously. You don't need to have the crocodile clips on there. You can just use the spikes and rest it in the holes, but crocs are helpful for holding it in place. So there we are, Loco War. I hope that kind of answers your question about how to measure the value of a pot with a multimeter. So thank you ever so much for watching, folks. I hope this video was interesting and useful for you. Please do carry on subscribing. I know I always say it, but it does make a big difference when you do that. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.